بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear students assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to the course of uh, history of english literature new classics to date Dear students uh, this is uh, lecture number 17 and uh, the topic uh, of uh, today's uh, lecture is romantic age novelist sir walter scott This is uh, Muhammad Asif Khan lecturer department of english kohat university of science and technology so moving uh, towards uh, the agenda of today's discussion first of all i will uh, introduce uh, sir walter scott and uh, the main thing is that uh, we will look at uh, the characterization of sir walter scott and the settings uh, which he used uh, in his novels after that uh, we will uh, look at uh, the style of uh, the scott this discussion will include uh, some of the objections uh, being raised against the style of uh, sir walter scott that will be followed by a comparison between the two important uh, and colossal personalities uh, of romantic age novelists these are sir walter scott and jane austen in this comparison i will conclude uh, the today's lecture because uh, this comparison will include all the main features of uh, these two important writers of romantic age starting from uh, the introduction of sir walter scott he was uh, born uh, in uh, 1771 and died uh, in uh, 1832 he was a contemporary of uh, the first uh, generation of uh, the romantic poets and uh, the second generation of uh, the poets of that age when we look at uh, sir walter scott as a novelist we see that uh, in the initial days and during uh, the first 5 or 6 years of his novel writing he was uh, very much uh, restricted uh, or confined uh, to those uh, well known and recognizable scenery and characters that were surrounding him or i mean that he was uh, very much uh, close uh, to the landscape views and the scenes from his surrounding so the novels which are uh, having uh, that uh, local color or uh, the shade of uh, the recognizable scenes and characters and uh, the novels which are based on uh, his uh, personal observations are listed below and the first one is uh, guy mandring and uh, this very novel is also named uh, as uh, astrologer because uh, the main character guy munring is also an astrologist and he is doing uh, predictions about uh, the future of uh, some of the other uh, main characters of uh, this very novel the second uh, important novel uh, that belongs to this time period is uh, antiquary and it was uh, followed by the old mortality and uh, the last important novel of this time period is uh, the heart of midlothian these very novels uh, are basically the novels which are having uh, that uh, domestic color of uh, the scotland after these initial novels he turned uh, towards uh, the historical novels and we see that uh, he came with the, the first attempt of the historical novel that was named as uh, ivanhoe and uh, this novel was published in 1819 this important novel was followed by kenilworth and uh, after that uh, we see quentin durward and after that we have talisman these uh, very historical novels are uh, mainstream novels which he wrote uh, in his life uh, after these very historical novels he turned back uh, towards the scottish antiquity and uh, this very 
return towards the Scottish antiquity happened uh, from time to time, as we see in the novel Monastery that was published in 1820 and St. Ronan's Well that was published in 1823. We see that uh, the most important uh, quality which he uh, reveals uh, in these uh, novels uh, is that uh, he was uh, a very expert, accomplished and skilled storyteller. And uh, in his novels, uh, he very gradually and slowly describes, relates or unfolds the story that uh, allows a uh, number of uh, diversions and deviations or digressions, specifically in the descriptions of his uh, natural landscape or the scenes or different interiors. Uh, that is uh, the finest uh, quality which he had that distinguishes uh, Walter Scott uh, from other novelists of that very time period. Uh, when we look at uh, the historical novels of uh, Sir Walter Scott, we see that he was not historically very strict and uh, there is uh, no such uh, preciseness or exactness or accuracy about the historical events uh, in his novels. But he was more focused on uh, describing uh, scenes of the bygone ages uh, by the means of the wealth of uh, his uh, lively and vivid or the colorful description of the scenes. And uh, we see that he used a vast uh, liveliness or energy in uh, these very scenes. He also mixed uh, the quality of uh, wit, humor and uh, the fun element or absurdity along with uh, the other quality that is uh, the quality of the sympathy and compassion or pity. So his uh, novels are not strictly historical. Basic thing was that he was just uh, conveying uh, the bygone ages or the past ages and he is mixing the quality of colorful description and uh, the humor and sympathy. After describing uh, a bit uh, the quality of storytelling of Sir Walter Scott, now I will move uh, towards the characterization which he used uh, in his uh, novels. We see that characterization is basically the creation or construction of uh, the fictional characters. Basically, it is a description of uh, that uh, distinctive nature of uh, each and every character that is in that very novel or any piece of writing. So, we see that uh, Sir Walter Scott depicted uh, or portrayed the historical characters of uh, Queen Elizabeth and uh, Queen Mary in his novels and that very description or these very portraits are so magnificent and uh, we see that uh, he constructed these characters so skillfully and magnificently that uh, sometimes we we see that they are uh, very close to or or these characters almost achieved that level of characterization of William Shakespeare. So, when we look at uh, the characterization which he did in his novels, we say that uh, he has given us uh, a number of uh, immortal or everlasting imperishable portraits of the creatures uh, of his imagination. So, he has uh, given us a uh, number of uh, eternal characters. Uh, these very characters are even remembered uh, today and we, we read these characters with a high level of fascination. So, along with his characterization, he has uh, that excellent command uh, on writing his dialogues. And uh, this very quality, it uh, adds uh, to the true characters or uh, when we sum up uh, the discussion of the characterization, his uh, command or excellence uh, or, or the grip 
on writing dialogues uh, it gave uh, that uh, regularity or uh, continuity to the characters uh, which he had created but uh, we see that uh, the novels of uh, sir walter scott they betray the same imaginative joy in recreation of uh, the past as uh, his narrative poetry did but uh, there are few aspects which are being offered in his novel as we see that these no- novels uh, presented him a more flexible and uh, wide field than his narrative poems and uh, we see that his novels uh, provided him a better opportunity for showcasing his uh, variety of uh, the gifts which he had and he very nicely presented uh, the wide range of uh, qualities which he, he had and uh, we see these very qualities in his uh, novels and in his poetry his novels also provided him an opportunity to present his uh, antiquarian knowledge the knowledge of the history which he had these very novels also presented the power of observation which he had and we see that uh, he has uh, a very high level of uh, power of uh, evaluating uh, and studying the life and characters and uh, these novels uh, also provided an opportunity to show us uh, the delight uh, which he had uh, in uh, portraying uh, the popular as well as courtly scenes and we see that uh, his novels uh, also provided uh, an opportunity to present the element of uh, a heavily loaded uh, humor so these qualities uh, his novels have as i told you in the last slide that the novels of scott betrays uh, the imaginative joy in the recreation of the past as uh, his uh, poetry had but these qualities uh, uh, put aside all these uh, shortcomings which he has in his uh, novels the most important uh, aspect uh, of uh, sir walter scott novels is that he is uh, the first uh, accomplished historical novelist and uh, we call him uh, the father of historical novel in english literature and uh, he did uh, a very enduring contribution to the development of historical novel these very qualities were both uh, included in his nature and he was trained for writing uh, historical novels and uh, we see that uh, he was uh, by nature and by training uh, perfectly suited to the accomplishment uh, and the completion of this task first reason is that he had a uh, very high level of uh, knowledge of history and he was a uh, profound and reflective reader of history the second thing is that he had the taste of storytelling that is one of uh, the important characteristic of uh, sir walter scott and the third thing that why he is a suitable person for writing historical novels was that he had inborn sense of picturesque or he has that feel for beauty scenic beauty and he he has uh, that uh, natural love for the pictorial aspect uh, of uh, literature and we see that uh, this uh, very sense of uh, picturesque was uh, developed by his uh, passion for antiquarianism though he was having uh, a conservative uh, or very traditional and uh, conventional uh, temper and because of uh, this nature he turned away from that uh, that very time period uh, keenness and enthusiasm towards the revolution or uh, rebellion against the the mindset uh, which was present in the 18th century and uh, this uh, conservative or traditional nature gave him that uh, sympathy for the days of uh, chivalry or for the past ages 
uh, and uh, the most important thing is that he was uh, the person who was living in romantic age but uh, he was only and only romantic in his love for for the beauty or love of the picturesque and the interest which he has in the middle ages or the connection which he had with the history so these are the two things which he had which uh, connects him with the romantic age uh, writers otherwise he was not uh, following the line of action or code of action which which they were following now when we look at the settings uh, which he used in his novels scott uh, was uh, very much uh, concerned about the settings of his novels and we see that uh, he made uh, the scenes uh, a crucial or necessary building block of uh, an action his action was uh, not complete without uh, the scenes uh, which he included or the places and the surroundings where the action were positioned or uh, the actions were taking place all these were very much connected to the action of the novel so we see that uh, readers uh, of the novels of uh, sir walter scott they can experience uh, the atmosphere of scotland in every event of his uh, scottish novels in the same way we see that uh, the reader can feel the presence of uh, the scottish uh, uplands uh, and the mountains uh, in the novels of sir walter scott again when we try to study the settings which he used in his novels scott uh, not only chooses the places so well he portrays these very places uh, so perfectly and so completely that the action of uh, the novel it uh, appears uh, approximately the consequence of uh, that natural environment so that is the beauty of uh, sir walter scott's settings uh, now let's uh, look at uh, uh, the style of uh, sir walter scott we see that uh, there are a number of observations uh, being raised against uh, the style of uh, sir walter scott and i have listed few of them the first one is that he was uh, in artistic and uh, he is showing lack of skill or talent uh, in his uh, novels so second third and fourth one are approximately same and we see that his style is often often stated as heavy which means uninterested or very much intense and that is a dragging one or having the element of boredom just carrying you along with it and there is the factor of insipidness that is that it is uh, spiritless or very much dull and monotonous you are uh, having uh, no taste or flavor in these very novels so that is the objection raised against sir walter scott that his style is very much uh, monotonous and having uh, no taste or it is tasteless the second thing is that uh, he often sketches uh, or draws a character roughly and just pushes him into the center of uh, that uh, stirring or uh, exciting incidents and uh, there is no proper arrangement uh, for uh, adding that character into sequence of the story so we see that he has uh, no link or inclination for tracing the the logical consequences of human actions and just pushing the characters uh, into the center of uh, the incidents and he is not uh, finding any logical connection or consequences of human actions but we see that all these objections and all this criticism washed away uh, swept away in the end by the wide range and the influential and the commanding currents of uh, the narrative genius that he had and that is uh, the thing which we come across when we read his novels this very quality and one or two other qualities these qualities swept away 
all the objections and criticism against Sir Walter Scott. Now let's see that uh, what are the other qualities which he had and we see that in addition to his uh, narrative genius, his greatness lies in the fact that he regenerates or reconstructs the past in such a way that uh, the men and women of the past or the previous ages and the old scenes they become lively and we see that uh, these very scenes uh, appear to be actually living and uh, as if uh, these very things are breathing with the, the strong uh, and uh, the regular rhythm of life. So that very throbbing element of life was uh, added uh, in the people in the men and women of the past ages and the scenes of the past ages which he reconstructed in his novels. So these two elements, his uh, storytelling and uh, his uh, recreation of the past, these two elements, uh, they just uh, swept away all the flaws uh, which he had in his uh, style. Now, Let's move uh, towards the final part of this lecture and in this part I will discuss uh, the main uh, characteristics of uh, the two important novelists of Romantic Age and these novelists are Sir Walter Scott and Jane Austen. We see that uh, Sir Walter Scott's qualities as a novelist were widely different from uh, those of the Jane Austen. The first thing is that Jane Austen painted the family life. And she was highlighting the domestic life uh, on a very small scale, that is in miniatures. On the other hand, he was painting pageantry of the history on the very wide canvas. So that is the difference. Jane Austen is uh, only focusing on domestic life, whereas he is painting on the very wide uh, canvas uh, and using the elements of history. In the same way we see that Jane Austen is very much precise and specifically describing the things uh, and uh, his description is very much accurate. Whatever she wants to write she is just focusing on that very thing. On the other hand we see that Scott is very diffusive and uh, Diffusive means that uh, something which spreads like a liquid widely and uh, as we studied in the first very characteristic of Sir Walter Scott that he is painting on a broader canvas. So he is uh, diffusive and the second thing is that he is digressive and digressive means that he is tending to depart from the, from the subject. He is not exactly or precisely or specifically focusing only on the subject which he has started. We see that he often diverts uh, and he often departs from the subject which is under the discussion. The third uh, and the most important uh, feature of uh, Jane Austen's writing that uh, she deals uh, with the close familiarities or the quiet intimacies of uh, the English uh, rural life that is uh, uh, very much free from uh, the high passions uh, or, or the struggles uh, that, were, uh, that were going on uh, in the time period of uh, the Romantic Age uh, poets and, uh, and writers. And we see no great actions in his writing. On the other side, Scott deals with chivalric, exciting, romantic and adventurous life of Highlanders. These Highlanders were the people who were living on the borders of England and Scotland. And uh, Sir Walter Scott is the person who spent uh, much of his uh, youth uh, among these very peoples. So he is uh, including uh, the chivalric, exciting and romantic, adventurous life of Highlanders and he is mixing this very thing with the glorious scenes of the past history. So dear students, uh, I hope that uh, with uh, this very comparison in which we studied that uh, how uh, Sir Walter Scott is different from Jane Austen, 
I also revised uh, the main contribution of Sir Walter Scott uh, in the field of uh, novel writing in English literature and uh, in the same way we revised uh, the main aspects of uh, the novel writings of Jane Austen. So thank you very much uh, for uh, listening passionately. I hope that now you will be having a better understanding of the novels and the novelists of uh, the Romantic Age. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.